welcome to the last part of the Great Cloud Basic tutorials for the Logic Green Technologies LGT 8XM chips. This is the last of the videos of specific tutorials. I might do others on subcomponents as requested, but this is a summary. So we've been through a whole series of capabilities in the um, LGT chip, and today I'm just going to summarize up what we've seen and what I've learned over the last... Um, two months since um, spotting, uh, been given these chips, been sent these chips. So we've been looking at um, two chips, uh, two boards, sorry, um, uh, nano board and a Uno star board. I'm careful how I say that because it's not an Uno. So these, this board, um, these are the boards here themselves. Um, let me just, look. that's a WAV gap and that's an Uno. They are pretty similar things, okay? Let me just put them side by side. They're pretty similar. Um, that's a better way. They have the same connections. Um, this I, I happen to choose and always choose um, dip sockets at the moment because I can, as I, if I do damage them, I can replace them, but I've never actually damaged one. Uh, the WavGat's got a few more inputs and outputs, but they're readily available and they're dance like cheaper than... Um, than, than, than the Nuno board, okay? A, a lot cheaper. Um, this is the um, Nano board. I don't have a Nano board. I, I use these uh, smaller versions. Um, but, um, you know, they're very similar. This has a USB connector. This does not, etc. But, you know, they're, they're the same thing. You know, these have the same chip in, in the center core there. Um, and they program pretty well, both of them. But what have I been using in the past is an important important to look at. This is a microchip. Um, um, and it's an MP Lab Express board. Um, it's a 16F. We don't even look in. It's a 15376. And I've been using this extensively over the last few years. Um, I was uh, I, I got sent about 30 of them by microchip for a major project I was working on for a robot. And it works quite well. However... I will be replacing that with this because this LGT has some benefits that I can not get from this particular board. So let's have a look at um, what we've learned and what we've seen and what you're going what you're going to get as a as a summary. So what I'll do is I'll deliver up the PowerPoints. I'll put them up as PDFs and uh, PowerPoints, and I'll pop those up in GitHub for us, GitHub, um, so that you can um, play with them, use them as, as you see fit. Um, I'll do PDFs because most people don't actually have PowerPoint. Um, I'll put all the demonstrations in GitHub, and they'll be in the distribution as well. The LGT SDK Builder. I've already I've only published one video on it. I've already got a handful of requests. Um, how I set it up. I will uh, package that up and um, put that in GitHub as well. The videos. I've posted these on YouTube. Follow and like. If you don't follow, there's just no point. Okay, I don't know what's happening. If you don't comment, if you don't like, there's just no point. So please, please follow and like. And I'll put that at the bottom as well. I'll put a load of URLs and I'll put more URLs in GitHub as I'm required and asked. And for the actual software I've been using, the distribution, is up on SourceForge, and I'll put that as a URL. But you just need to make sure that you get a version, a later version, because everything I've shown you is uh, as a result of being sent these boards, and um, those I've made major changes to the compiler as part of um, the project to get this operational. So what have I learned? Okay. Um, and I'm sharing my insights with you. So I've got a comparison here. I've got a table on the left hand side. You can see a set of criteria from frequency down to native program interface. And I've got the two chips. Um, I've got I've got basically. Let me put these side by side. I'm, I'm comparing one of these versus one of those effectively. The differences. So and I've gone through the things that I found and I can then talk you through what's changed. So frequency, um, LGT has got a much larger range of uh, frequencies available to you. However, the ATME gets us to go a tad slower and it does operate down to slower frequencies. Um, 
even on the internal clock, um, it um, it operates a bit slower. The uh, the uh, the Mega. Now the difference there is is that the um, LG T it um, claims to be a, uh, a, a calibrated, uh, more uh, an accurately calibrated internal uh, internal oscillator, whereas the the Mega is up to 10% um, errors. Um, ADC, we've used the ADC. Um, as we've used the frequencies, to be quite frank, we've used the ADC. There are two differences here. What These are 12-bit um, ADCs, and there's a differential capability, which I haven't shown you, but is readily, readily available. Uh, and that makes, that makes it quite interesting so that you can actually um, use a differential ADC. Um, in the demonstrations that are up on GitHub, it shows you how to use the DAC. The DAC is quite interesting. It's an 8-bit programmable DAC. And, of course, the Amiga doesn't have one. Operating voltage, uh, you can operate these things right the way down, especially this one. I have tested that. You can, I've tested this little baby, um, this little one here, the little nano. I've run that down to um, 1.8 volts and it operates absolutely perfectly. I can see no issues with it. Um, USR, um, two channels on the LGT and only one out on the AT Amiga. If I've made any of this incorrect, just let me know. You know, I'm not a genius. Um, the big difference there is that um, you can obviously use software on the AT Amiga or in the LGT. So you could have many, many, many different uh, combinations of USR using hardware and software. There's a differential amplifier, um, which is programmable on the AGT, and that's not available on the um, AT Amiga. Uh, uh, v references, um, you've got a selection of three on the LGT versus uh, the 1.1 on the AT Amiga. Um, you've got these very different uh, current driven IO um, on the LGT, six ports up to eight uh, milliamp, 80 milliamps, and that is for driving heavy duty PWM. And I've shown you how you can do that to those ports. Uh, you've got to do, you've got to turn them on, okay, All right? And make sure that you know what you're doing, but you don't get that capability on the AT Amiga. EEPROM, big difference. Okay, so if you use um, on the AT Amiga, you get 2K of EEPROM. If you want 2K of EEPROM on a LGT, you're consuming program memory. Now, one thing that I am not sure the impact of is how does that work when you've got the Opti bootloader for the Arduino. I have no idea how it works, okay? Um, so, you know, someone's got to do a piece of work to figure out if you have 2K of EEPROM on an LGT, does the bootloader still work? I think it does. I don't know where it sits in, in memory, okay? So it's, it just needs to have a little bit of work. But overall, your program memory is reduced if you have EEPROM on the LGT. LGT also has a unique ID in Great Cal Basic. Uh, there is a uh, GUID. You can get the GUID. It's very easy. Uh, and there is no such capability out on the um, AT Amiga. Now, that's quite useful if you want to do some encoding or you want to check your licenses, etc. Okay, now I'm not getting into the uh, design or the manufacturer principles of these chips, but one would hope that um, those are unique. The uh, form is um, a 32-bit, a 32-pin device with the AT Amiga. Quite clearly, uh, I've shown you a 32-pin device on the um, LGT, but it's actually available as a 40, 32, and a 20, and that gives you great capabilities for your projects. So um, the board that I will have been using in the past is a um, this um, 16F board as a small pick. Um, that has been a 40-pin device. I can now move over to a 40-pin um, LGT. Programming interface is very different. Um, with the AT Amiga, um, if you, have, you can use a SPI readily available. And on the LGT, it's called SWD. And I'll come on to that in a moment, OK? Because most of you will use bootloaders, so you don't even know about that, OK? Now, I do, because I managed to blow away the bootloader quite early on during the development so things that have changed that have changed that needed to be changed to support this uh, chip is obviously the all the internal oscillator stuff has is very different the adc is different so these are changes i had to make to um 
the uh, programs USR needed updating and changing, DAC support, VREF support, EPROM support, Unique ID support, SPI support, I square C support. I mean, there were lots of changes, and because I did those changes for all the compiler, I happen to know it. So it's not like with um, other uh, tool chains, I just happen to do all these. That's not true. I did it with um, somebody else. I did it with Frank Stein over in Germany. Um, we worked together to do this, so I lied, okay? Let's move on through the comparison. And so in terms of other comparisons, I thought well, I just want to go through performance uh, through to um, programming again. Performance. If you have a baseline, I'm going to assume a baseline is just the just the board as it stands, as I've got it here. By the way, I have a strap on here just so you know that. So this board, this is a WAVGA. I'm just going to use talk about the internal oscillator and on uh, so I get max speed, okay, max frequency, and on the Uno, the external oscillator, max speed, okay, just the maximum speed, all right, let's, I just use as a baseline, and anything I do, the LGT is 100% faster, I mean, there's absolutely no doubt, it is 100% faster, because of the frequency, um, however, SPI, it's blindingly fast, it's 400% faster, it is a very different SPI interface, um, if we change this into the libraries, low-level SPI libraries, you can make this really haul, okay? It will really go very fast, the SPI libraries. Um, and we've seen that demonstrated in uh, some of the graphics, GLCD. Whilst the I2C um, is different, slightly different, it is the same in terms of overall performance. EEPROM, I'd make, mention that. And then this bootloader and programmer stuff, it's like, why did the Opti bootloader select a different BPS from the AT Amiga? I mean, it's just like, why would you do this? Oh, I was very confused, and I genuinely am confused why someone has said, oh, okay, we'll have the same type of bootloader, but we'll use a different BPS. So when you're using the LGT, it's um, 57K, and when you're using the AT Amiga, it's 115K. It's just very strange. And finally, this, there is a big difference in terms of the um, bootloader. If you want to program these chips natively, um, you don't need to use the bootloader, especially, I mean, especially on, on, on this. Um, you don't need the bootloader, to be quite frank. You don't need the risk of having the bootloader there. Um, you're going to have to sort out a programmer. Um, you need to use the STK bootloader um, programmer or get the, the, the programmer from... Um, um, Logic Green, there is, I've been using an Uno as a programmer, SDK emulator, but you're going to have to sort something out. It's not not the same. You'll sit there for a few hours trying to figure that one out, but I would just use the um, uh, Arduino as a programmer, SDK emulator. And of course, with the AT Amiga, you've got many, 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 many options. And even a pit kit too. And I sell those, so I'm quite pleased about those. Okay. Um, these are the major differences. So, summary. There are some ups and there are some downs with this chip, okay? You know, you've got to make those choices and go through that selection criteria and make that choice. Um, it is horses for courses. Um, as we say in England, you have to make your choice and then go with it. Look for your platform support. Make sure that when you choose a development tool, it's, it's ubiquitous. Yeah, um, obviously, obviously we've seen three of them this week. There may be others. I am not aware of any others, um, but just make sure that you can support it. And then there is the completeness and scope of that solution to make sure that it meets your requirements. Do not assume because you can do it on an Uno, you can do it on a LGT. That will not be the case, okay? Because not all the libraries have been ported. This WAVGAT, this chipset, the LGT, sorry, is twice as fast. I would be not. I would be very surprised if SPI does not cause a problem um, as these things go forward. Great car basic. I've resolved it. Okay. I know what I've done. Okay. And um, we have a very closed development community. Um, in terms of um, Arduino, I, I think there can be more issues down the line, but time will tell. Um, I know that if I take um, an AT Amiga code. 
it is not compatible with the a a LGT. It is not compatible. Um, somebody said on the web that it's 99% um, compatible. Well, I can tell you what the 1% is. I've listed them in this presentation. It's different in terms of memory, performance, SPI, I2C, ADC, serial. If that's 1% of a chip, I would be genuinely surprised. But you cannot take and trust that you're, you can develop on a mega and port straight across. It may not be that simple. You will have to do much more regression testing, especially if you do not know the development tool in detail. And it's, and it's uh, what's the correct term I'm looking for here? And it's how long it's been supporting um, that particular um, chip. New developments will, will need greater testing. And then there is support. Where do you go to get support? If you're quite frank, I have been trying to engage and have engaged with Logic Green Technologies in China. It's extremely hard. I would not expect anyone to have great amount of success with the um, LGT SDK Builder um, tool. It is an interesting tool, but you're not going to get very much support for it. Um, Great Cloud Basic, I mentioned you can get that from a very focused um, forum. And for Arduino, there are thousands of forums out there where you get a myriad of advice, which is, for me, just as confusing as getting any advice. So I wanted to share with you um, the um, a set of tutorials on the LGT uh, chipset. Um, I think I've done that. I will post more videos that are explicit around the usage, um, but I really hope you've enjoyed this. And if you have, please post, okay? I'll be very, very grateful. As a summary, enjoy these chips. They are fun. They are a real competitor to the existing marketplace. Enjoy.